Okay, today we got a really great show. So we're gonna talk about the October real estate shakeup. There's a lot of uh, what I would call misinformation that's kind of rolling around. Uh, I wouldn't say misinformation. They're using national information and trying to make it local. And I just wanna bring some perspective, make sure everybody understands where we're at, where we're going, what to expect, how to plan. Again, this is to help you and your family save money. So make sure, hey, subscribe. Let us know what you think. Ask your questions. We get lots and lots of questions. Like today, one of the key elements, uh, you know, what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in some perspective. Uh, one of the folks said, George, hey, listen, man, you keep talking about the numbers and you keep talking about, you know, what used to happen and what some folks are saying, we're heading back to, you know, 2008 to 2013. What's really the difference? You know, can you can you show me a chart? You're really good with these charts. Can you show me a chart? Yes, I can, and we will. So we're going to go through all of that. So here's the thing: make sure that you hit the little bell so you get updated. You're going to get real time information, and I got to get inform information from August. All right, which is what you're reading a lot of times in the media right now. This is the end of October. I mean, next weekend, next Sunday is Halloween the best day ever, right? Because I then get to uh, dress like my normal self and everybody else gets to dress up. Just kidding. All right, so let's, uh, let's go a little bit over what's going on right now. And I must confess, our inventory is again on its way back down as planned. Remember, we have seasonal cycles in real estate. Well, there's cycles in everything, but the best part is the real estate uh, cycles are very predictable. All right, so we had our, you know, mid-August to end of September slowdown. Why? Students getting back in school. We have last minute vacations. We have the weather changing and everybody wants to get out. Real estate is not top of mind. However, the end of September, when the leaves start falling, People start coming back inside, real estate becomes top priority again. And let's show you how that works. So remember, a couple of weeks ago, we had uh, two weeks where the inventory was actually higher than it was year over year. We're back down 4.4% as total number of homes active on the market. We are up 9.2% homes coming on market, totally normal. Sellers coming in saying, hey, dude, I wanna get my home sold. I want to be in a new home or I'm going to relocate someplace sunny because it's going to get cold. Okay. I get that. But notice our pended always follow right in line. We're up on pended also at 8.3% and sold year over year. We're at 15.2% crazy market over crazy market 2021 over 2020. All right. Now when we look at it month over month, year over year to give us perspective of crazy market to crazy market, our inventory again is down 4.4%. The uh, new on market is actually down 5.1%, 5.1%. There we go, I need to articulate. We are feeling that, why? Here we go, the, our running average for the last seven days, we had 1,195 homes coming on market. However, we had 1,930 that went pended, meaning a buyer and a seller agreed to terms, but they haven't closed yet. However, we also had 1,598, almost 1,600 homes that did close. We have new owners. Both of these numbers are bigger than that. We, every single week, are drawing down that inventory. We haven't seen this flip, except for a couple of weeks, in, well, almost two years-ish, right in there. Uh, we keep pulling down our inventory and pulling down our inventory. So that when we take a look at what we have over here, even though month over month for the same year, 2020 versus 2021, we're up 8.1%, but our sales are down 8.4%. And you might say, George, if this is such a crazy great market, why are our sales down? <laughs> because of this. We just don't have enough homes. And you might say, okay, well, show me. And I know that Marie posts our, 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 uh, our charts which is exciting. Okay, so as you can see, let's get that up there. Let me hang it up to here. 
There we go. Well, there we go. It's almost like, uh, well, let me stand on this side. It's almost like, you know, somebody drinking too much. There we go. So the dark green, okay, those are sold. The light green, those are active, okay? That's our active inventory. And that's our sold inventory right there, the dark green, all right? And as you can see, we have a lot more dark green than we do light green, okay? And in fact, remember this number. This is an important number to write down. 9,066. Yes, that's for September. Total number of homes sold. 9,066. Remember that number. All right. Now, you might say, all right, George, what's, what's the deal? I mean, why is this so much different? Why are people, you know, saying, oh, my gosh, this is a bubble. This is going to change. This is a bubble. This is going to change. Okay. You saw the light green. Okay. I'm going to give you a hint of perspective. Here's perspective. Okay. Normal market. Let me get that up. Everything's in reverse. Sorry about that. There we go. Normal market. Notice the light green. Notice how it is almost always double what the dark green is with the number of sales. And then as we hit our yikes, you can see how our inventory fell and it flipped in my over 27 years of practice. I have never seen this consistency of a flip of we've had more homes that have sold than we have available inventory. Okay. And that is a, that is a big deal. That is a monster of a deal. When we look at, we use a national number, even a local number, 13.1% appreciation over the last 12 months. Gosh, you know, that's a tad bit over 1% per month appreciation, which was completely different than what we saw back in 2008 to 2013. Hey, some people say, George, you know, that really happened in 2007 it was late 2007. The impact was realized really starting in about 2008. In my humble opinion, that's when we started to see it. We saw the hints of it. Actually, we saw the hints of it in 2005. Uh, and then, of course, things started changing. And as we kept doing our, our updates and our videos and whatnot, some folks, some folks are like, dude, man, you're a doom and gloomer. And I'm like, no, I'm just telling you the facts. If you know the facts, if you know the truth, you know how to plan for it. You know how to protect your family. And that's what this is. Is there a bubble that's going to happen that is going to change and drive everything down. No, there's not. We are going to see a tapering. Okay. So I just mentioned we we're, we're seeing about 1% per month appreciation. Okay. Well, next year, are we going to see 1% per month appreciation? Probably not. We won't see a 13 to 15% appreciation depending on what area you're in. We'll probably say, see something between eight and 9%. That means that we will start to taper off. Our inventory hopefully will go from seven to 10 days of inventory when a healthy market is four to six months, okay? We will probably start to balance that out a little bit more, which is necessary, okay? But our market will still be in a positive growth state, all right? What about the following year? Hey, we are not gonna see the eight to 9%. We're probably gonna see four to 6%. And then after that, boop, I think we're going to hit double digits again and it's going to take off, but I do not foresee a bubble. Why? There's not, there's not enough inventory. Item number one, two, we have equity in our homes. Oh, since 2019, we've seen approximately a 33 to 35% appreciation in homes. So people have equity in their homes. You might say, George, what the heck does that mean? Let's bring in perspective perspective looks like this. So if we look at 2009 and 2010 inventory compared to today, and that is taking the last 12 months of where we're at today versus the last 12 months, right? So in, and naturally, so this would be 2021, 2009, 2010, right? Kind of in the throes of things. So here, we had uh, inventory, which was down 63% as of today. So there were 17,000 listings. There's 65, 54 today. Okay, let's go down here. New on market, eh, pretty close, right? New on, you know, new homes coming on market, pretty close. But look at this. We only had 82,000 uh, pended sales, whereas we have over 92,000 today, right? Okay. Now you might say, okay, yeah, so that's numbers not bad, but keep in perspective, 
what inventory level do we have to deal with? And that's massive, right? We come down here, sales are up 13%, right? Because today we've already sold 97,006, and here we were at 86,002. Now, because I believe the old adage that a picture is worth a thousand words. Let me show you perspective. This is perspective. Light green are homes available. Dark green are homes that sold. Well, isn't that just the inverse? <laughs> so when I hold these two up together, see if I can get this right. There we go. There we go. Marie is, uh, I'm sure, laughing at me right now. There we go. There we go. Try not to be, make people sick. And there. All right. So there you go. That is called perspective. Those are two what I would consider bipolar markets. Now, in order for us to have that, inventory has to change. And that is a massive amount of change. How much? 63%. Uh, guys, uh, that's not going to happen here anytime soon. Even some of the foreclosures that are out there, there are some folks saying, oh my gosh, there's foreclosures, you need to go get them. Hey, listen, we're, we're not losing 1% per month. <laughs> I like what we saw you know, in some of those uh, times in uh, between 2008, 2013, okay? We're actually gaining. So people, even if they are in foreclosure, they have money. They can still sell their home and get money versus sell their home and they still owed money. That's the difference. So even today, you could be buying, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer could go out and buy a home and never even know that the seller was in default. They were in foreclosure. They would never know. It's not a big deal. Why? Because we have equity. We should not see foreclosures really, except for under some strategic purposes, which those are far and few between. So, whoop, perspective, understand our market today versus our market, uh, when we were circling with the tiny bull man, two entirely different markets. There are a lot of folks saying that this is what we're heading back to, this, this 2009, 2010. And I 100% I disagree with that. We have better rates. We have a better economy. Uh, we have better job performance. And we have equity. And equity is massive in this situation, which is a huge determiner because we did not have that between 2008 and 2013. Just understand that. So when we come back, and again, we talk about what are some of the uh, driving factors here, still our mortgage rates. Yes, understand rates are going to bobble up. They're going to bobble down. Then they're probably going to continue on an upward trend to about 3.5% by the end of Q2, second quarter next year. Why? Feds are going to start pulling back on buying mortgage-backed securities. Remember, rates are based on the bonds, 10-year treasuries. It's like the stock market. The feds have nothing to do with it. And in fact, sometimes the feds, uh, you know, the, many times will have an impact on it, right? Because again, it's a stock market. It's confidence in the stock market, where we're going, what we're doing. However, when they start pulling back on mortgage-backed securities, the change that's going to happen then is that the bond values are going to start dropping in value. That means interest rates are going to start going up. Okay. Just plan for it. Just know that that is on the horizon, okay? Non-owner occupied, they're at 3.75, no points. That's par pricing. Again, watch the video on five things you need to ask when getting quoted loan rates. I'll tell you, I can't tell you how many thanks we received since that video of people saying, oh my gosh, George, that makes absolute perfect sense and I see the mistake. I see the error of my ways. All right understand it's free so make sure you subscribe if you have any questions let us know uh tim hopefully hopefully the uh the graph gave you perspective of why things are so different today than what they were before and why we do not see that happening again i don't see that in the near future at all i don't even see that in the mid future that is a massive massive shift then there would be a lot bigger things happening to, uh, to make that happen again. Anyway, if you guys have any questions, post them. We get back to you within 30 minutes, except for on Sundays. Absolutely have a fabulous day, and uh, I will be seeing many of you guys out there. Doug and Annette, I look forward to seeing you guys later this afternoon and catching up. And in the meantime, you guys have a beautiful day. Take care.